you always get what you want, invariably. Even though you may think that it's entirely opposed to your wishes. But if it's your karma, everything that happens to you, put it in another way, everything that comes to you is a return to you of what goes out of you. Yes, obviously, that's absurd. If you confine the definition of yourself to your voluntary conscious behavior. That's a ridiculous definition of oneself. Oneself, by any, any stretch of the imagination, must involve far more than the conscious and voluntary aspects of our behavior. And if we see that it involves intimately and inescapably the behavior of what we call the other, the not-self, the environment, and see that these two are moving together like the two sides of the snake when it swims. Then you get a very curious feeling. Like attracts like. You have to understand, you are a magnet. Whatever you are, that's what you draw to you. If you're negative, you're gonna draw negativity. You're positive, you draw positive. You're a kind person, more people are kind to you. So you're like a magnet, you know, and you gotta understand something about like attracts like. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. You weren't really ready for the world, were you? But when you show yourself that you have the power to come into alignment, not just with who you were before you were born, but with all that you've become ever since. Not just with you and all you've become, but with Source itself. When you show yourself that by being selfish, which means by reaching for the best feeling thought you can find on whatever subject is active. If you organize your mind to a certain level of organization, it in turn organizes the whole system. Your body, your emotion, your energies, everything gets organized in that direction. Once all these four dimensions of you, your physical body, your mind, your emotion and the fundamental life energies are organized in one direction. Once you are like this, anything that you wish happens without even lifting a little finger actually. It would help to assist it with activity. When you decide that you're going to take control of your relationship to who you really are, when you decide that you're going to tend to this gap between you, wherever you are, on whatever subject you're experiencing, and who you really are and what you know about the same, now life is going to take a new form and shape for you. You're going to feel exhilarated. You're going to feel satisfaction. Those who are watching you will see you as someone who seems to create tremendously with ease. But even without doing any activity, you can still manifest what you want. If you organize these four dimensions in one direction and keep it unwavering in that direction for a certain period of time. Right now the problem with your mind is, every moment it is changing its direction. It is like you want to travel somewhere and every two steps if you keep changing your direction, the question of you reaching the destination is very remote unless it happens by chance. So, organizing our minds and in turn organizing the whole system and these four basic dimensions of who you are right now in one direction, if you do this, you are a Kalpavruksha yourself. Anything that you wish will happen. Everyone that I know who is able to get things into their life practices this. I call it the four reallys, all right? So that what you really, 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 really want, you will get. And these four reallys stand, each of them stands for something. And if you look at people who are good at, some people call them lucky, some people call them highly spiritual, whatever it might be, but they are good at getting what they want in their lives. And here are the four reallys. The first one says, I wish. So what you really wish for, everything that you'd like to get into your life starts with a wish. It's a thought. 
I wish I could get that job. I wish I could get that promotion. I wish I could lose weight. I wish I could get rid of that addiction that I have. I wish I could, whatever, it's a wish. So what you have to start with a wish. The second really stands for what you desire. What you really wish and desire. And the difference between what you wish for and desire is in what I call asking. Ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. It's not empty words. Be willing to ask. When I get stuck sometimes writing and I'm just not quite sure where to go or whatever, I just leave the typewriter or I leave the yellow pad that I'm writing on. I walk over to the couch and I get into a meditation and I say, I would like some help in having this become clearer as to how to express it. And it's always there. Sometimes the phone will ring and my wife will call and she'll say, did you know that this was in the mail? And I'll say, read it to me and it'll be exactly what I needed. Sometimes it just comes in the, in the, the thing that I call an intuition or an insight, whatever it might be. The third really stands for what I intend. So now you shift away from what I wish for and ask for and you frame it in such a way that you intend to create it. I intend to create this whatever it might be, whether it's a healing, whether it's a, a losing of weight, whether it's getting rid of an, an addiction, whether it's creating prosperity, I intend to create it. And if you notice people who are good at manifesting, they don't mince those kinds of words. I will do it. And someone will say, well, what if it doesn't work out? You say, well, then I'll just learn whatever I have to learn from it not working out. But I intend to create this in my life. There's an intention, and the intention is so powerful that you become independent of the good opinion of other people. You're not checking it out with the tribe. You're not checking it out with what everybody else out there said you should do or shouldn't do. You're saying to yourself, I intend to create it. And I often tell people, don't tell anybody else about what you want to manifest. Don't make it a big statement. Instead, keep it to yourself. And they say, why do you want to say that? I say, because the minute that you do, you invoke ego. And in quantum physics, there's a simple line that says particles themselves are not responsible for their own creation. Another way of saying that is the way St. Paul said it. That which is seen, he said, hath not come from that which doth appear. That is the source of everything over here. It's not over here. It's in this invisibleness. And once you invoke ego, you have to defend it, you have to explain it, you have to get the tribe involved in it, and before long, you've lost the capacity to manifest. It's a spiritual journey inspiration in spirit when you're inspired in spirit the fourth really stands for passion passion that is I am absolutely passionate about it and I intend to create it with that love one of the great books that one of my teachers sent to me from ancient India written like 3,000 years ago has a line in it that says to attempt to manifest what you want without passion is like dressing up a corpse. <laughs> so you take this corpse and you put a tuxedo on it <laughs> and you dress it all up and you put all the makeup on it and you take it out into the world and you say, now see what you can get for me. But it, basically it's dead inside. And if it's dead inside, that is if it lacks passion, if you lack passion, you're not going to be able to attract it into your life. So what you wish for, ask for, intend to create, and have passion about, you'll get, you'll get it. That's the good news. The bad news is that what you really, 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 really don't want, you will also get. And this is one of the most difficult things for people to understand. And when you're dealing with the tribe and you're dealing with what is and what, uh, what everybody else tells you is impossible, and somebody might be watching this and say, well, that's just a lot of nonsense. I mean, you can't just put your attention on something, think about it, and have it come true. It involves a whole lot of other stuff like that. You see, here's how it works. You cannot attract thin from I hate being fat. Because if what you think about is what expands, and what you're thinking about is hating being fat, then hating being fat is what you will continue to manifest. You act upon what you think about. You cannot attract prosperity from an inner consciousness that says, I hate being poor, I despise being poor. 
Because if you despise being poor, if you're angry about being poor, then being angry about being poor or despising it is what you will continue to act upon and you'll be able to say, see? Now that's, it gets worse. <laughs> you cannot manifest what you want if your attention is on what is. If your attention is on what is and the circumstances of your life, that's where your thoughts are then you will continue to create what is into your life. You've got to figure out a way to get your mental images, your energy, your attention, your higher awareness off of what is and onto what you want. And every time your thoughts are on what is, you shift it to what do I want? And it's even worse than that. You cannot Manifest what you want if your attention is on what always has been. This is the way things are. You'll hear people say it to you all the time. These are the circumstances of life. Don't you understand? This is reality. Wake up. These are the way things have always been. There's always been poor people. You're one of them. That's just the way it is. And you watch that person and being poor continues to manifest into their life. See, uh, if you're postponing something, you're obviously doing something that you don't want to do. If there is something that you really want to do, will you postpone it or prepone it? <laughs> Hello? Do you see somebody is waiting for someone they badly want to see? Only ten minutes. In the ten minutes, they will look at the watch twenty-five times. Why? They want to prepone it. You're doing something that you don't want to do, so you want to postpone it. I'm asking, why the hell are you doing something that you don't want to do? No, because if I do this, I will get that, I will get that. That's not the point. There's nothing to get in this life. There's really nothing to get in this life. Either you lived this life, in a profound and intense manner or you did not. What will you get in the end? Huh? If somebody dies in the agricultural college, do they bury them or uh, fire them? How is it? What's the tradition? Burying is good for agriculture because human beings make good manure. So in the end, what will happen to you and me? They will either bury us or burn us. That's all will happen in the end. You think something else, they'll give you a prize. Nothing will happen in the end. Only thing is the process of life. How wonderfully did you live? That's all there is. So if you are doing something really wonderful, do you want to prepone it or postpone it? Huh? Prepone only. So you must find. What is it that you really want to do? If you find that one thing, you will always prepone everything, not postpone.